It's amazing to me that you are in California and you have way more snow. <laughs> we don't have any snow at all in Wisconsin. Like I was surprised. I was like, there's snow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it. last week I think it actually did snow here. Um, mm -hmm. This whole weekend it's been sunny, so. At least you have some. We don't have like any anymore. We It hasn't snowed here since like January. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I like how I took notes and I left them all in the other room. But all the kids right now are going to be playing outside. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to talk about the Furies a little bit because mm -hmm. there's like this huge um, kind of underlying thing with the Furies in Greek mythology that I don't know that Rick took that into account when he was writing them into Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I mean, it's clear that he knows, he knows this mm -hmm. mythology because there's little nods to it here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so functionally, the Furies, um, so there is a trilogy of classical tragedies called the Oresteia. And basically, when King Agamemnon came home from Troy, he was immediately murdered by his wife. And um, that kind of set off a chain of events because then Apollo sent their son to come kill the mom. And then the Furies came to punish the son because mm -hmm. the Furies job is crimes against parents. It's um, crimes against older people, perjury. Um, like they're very law and order in their mythology. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mostly those crimes against parents. So when they were coming after Orestes, they were mad that he had killed his mom and Apollo had sent Orestes. So Apollo's like having his back, like, oh, why are you guys after this dude? Um, stop following him. And mm -hmm. Athena's solution is let's test out a new system. So I'm gonna pull some Athenian people and we'll have them listen to Orestes and we'll have them listen to the theories and we'll call it a trial. Like, we'll just, we'll call it a law trial. <laughs> like that's, so that is their origin of like what justice actually is, is that mm -hmm. like, that's how trials started. It was this whole thing with Orestes defending his position of killing his mom for killing his dad. So, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the whole thing with the, the Furies versus the Eumenides, because I think we hear Annabeth in um, Percy Jackson at one point call them the kindly ones. Mm -hmm. um, so Furies was their name, but the Eumenides was another name. And it, it does mean like, you know, the good meaning, the kindly ones. Um, so the, the Oresteia is supposed to be when that switched, because after the trial of Orestes, where they do not win that trial and Orestes is not found guilty of, you know, like a crime against his mom, because I think the justification was like, your mom is not as important as your dad, which would only work in the ancient world. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they essentially were like, yeah, this child is of his father, not of his mother. So um, uh, the, the Furious were like, well, what do we do now? What's our job now? And Athena's like, no, you're still going to be the people that go after justice. It's just, you're going to be a little bit more soothed now. You're not going to be quite as angry. You're not going to be quite as, you know, filled with vengeance. And so, um, yeah, uh, that's when they switched from being the theories to the kindly ones. And, you know, it was partly to pacify them, but um, mm -hmm. it's interesting that we have them kind of coming back in theory form and we, um, I guess the crime that they would be protecting against in that very early Percy Jackson and the Olympians is the stealing of the lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, it, if we think of Zeus as Percy's great uncle, I guess, it's yeah. somewhat a crime against family. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, I don't know. <laughs> like, it doesn't line up exactly. Yeah. And well, and especially with the Furies being there, it's interesting to think about how they tell us in like the third episode of the show that monsters come after you for because of things about you. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't really fit necessarily with 
It's weird because the Furies are there for a very specific reason, though when we first see them there, we don't, if you don't know the story, you don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's interesting because they're there specifically because, um, because Hades' home is gone. And mm -hmm. that's like, the main thing we find out like seven episodes later <laughs> of, yeah. what, of like what they're actually there for. So like them being there for like law and justice, like actually kind of makes sense because Hades is like, somebody took my freaking thing that like makes that I can use to be invisible to steal something from my brother. And now he's like trying to start a ridiculous war because of this, like go get it back. And so it like is interesting when I when you think about it that way because they're they're kind of doing that weird role in a different way because it's just law and order against a twelve year old child who has yeah. no idea what's going on. Like, well, and are the these gods are um, not benevolent? Um, what's the omniscient? These gods aren't omniscient in the same way because how do they not know that Percy didn't take you know yeah. like. That's another interesting thing about this depiction of the gods is this lack of omniscience. It kind of lends way for this whole conflict. And I'm trying to think in mythology, sometimes, sometimes the Greek gods appear omniscient, sometimes they don't. Um, and so it could really go either way of them not knowing for sure who took the lightning bolt or, you know, I, that's, that's what gets me too, is just because like, the story that comes to mind, and I think I had told this one, it was the downfall of man that made Zeus want to flood the earth. Um, that whole oh, story yeah. Yeah. was, um, yeah, some mortal dude tried to feed Zeus his child, and Zeus knew that he was doing it. He knew, like, hey, there is a little bit of human boy in this meal. I'm not going to eat it, and I'm going to zap him. So, um you know, he was omniscient enough to know he did that. Why wouldn't he be omniscient enough to know, hey, this kid didn't steal my lightning bolt. This kid did. Mm -hmm. Or like, especially interesting to think about with the Fury showing up the way that they do against Percy in that first episode is like, the whole reason that they're even there is because of Luke. <laughs> Yeah. And, like, everything that happens to Percy is because of Luke in that first episode, like, all of it, which is weird to think about um, yeah, when you they're actually not even think about it. Yeah, not to Luke yet. No, and it's, like, one of those things that, like, of why I'm, like, oh, like, especially with Luke is that realizing that, like, his mom is in the underworld and all this stuff happens because of the stuff that Luke was doing. And yeah. so... It's like, if they knew that, if they were omniscient of that, then they would have known what Luke was doing to begin with, and they wouldn't have been doing all of this crazy stuff. Um, I feel like if you do like the narrative that the gods are abusive parents, which is clearly like the kind of general narrative of Percy Jackson in general, it makes sense that they wouldn't notice that. Like, mm -hmm. I truly think one of the most in-character abusive parent moments of the whole series is that Zeus sends his kids out to look for the lightning bolt because it never occurs one time in his mind that one of his kids would have stolen it from him. <laughs> and yeah. does, does not think that Ares did it. Ares did it. He, he, like, he had a part in that, but never even thought that his kids would do that to him. That's a very like abusive parent thing to do there. They don't, they don't think like that. And so it makes sense when you think about it from that perspective, but I feel like it's impossible to do a series like this if they actually are like omnipotent because it's like they can't do anything. Like yeah. Percy would like think like I want to beat up Zeus and Zeus would show up in his room being like let's fucking go. <laughs> like exactly. It, like what 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 are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> yeah, and I mean if we're going with the theories we're also sent because of the Hades part. Mm. That somewhat makes sense because the theories live like in the underworld, like mm -hmm. that's supposed to be where they reside afterwards. And um, in some versions, they are the children of Hades and Persephone. But the reason that they protect these like blood things is because they literally came from the drips of blood when Uranus got castrated. Like they were the drops of blood that fell on the earth. That's fun. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we're just, we're penis blood. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
I don't want to think about that when I think about Mrs. Dodds. <laughs> yeah. The leathery wings was actually a good addition on Rick's part, though, um, because yeah. they say winged, but they don't say, you know, bat wings. They don't say mm -hmm. anything like that. But if you imagine a creature of the underworld, you're not imagining feather wings. You know, like feather wings for us is more like angel imagery mm -hmm. or um, if they were more ethereal wings, that that reads more fairy. So, and, and I do think, because I noted it, um, when I look at my copy of Percy Jackson and the Olympians that I like made annotations in back in 2009, I underlined that they were wearing, or that Miss Dodds was wearing a black leather jacket. I was like, wait, a Southern lady wearing a black leather jacket, something feels off about this. And immediately mm -hmm. was like, Mm -hmm. What is this? <laughs> I think I remember many years ago reading an interview with Rick where he admitted that he did that on purpose, that he had her wearing leather to try to allude to the fact that she was um, that she was one of the Furies, because that's really that's how I would picture some mm -hmm. of Hades Furies is walking around like tattooed with leather jackets and like vivid hair and things like that, as opposed to a uh, fifth of sixth grade teacher <laughs> yeah well, i mean we've all had teachers like that too though that's the thing is yeah. that it's believable that a fury would disguise herself as a teacher and be this teacher that's a hard ass on percy because we've all had that experience where it feels like a teacher is just evil like they're just out to mm -hmm. get you and anything you do is going to be crazy yeah 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 and especially it goes back to like the, the thing you were saying before about how they're very like law and order. Like it reminds mm. me of how we as as like a society talk about how the police aren't shit. And because they go they're so like tunnel vision on one thing that they can't see anything else. Like mm -hmm. the like the idea that Mrs. Dodge shows up at that school and immediately hates everything that Percy does, even when the things that he does doesn't make sense with like who she thinks he is, like it never occurs to her that she could be wrong that like yeah. this that this 12 year old kid did not like they never even stopped to think about how did this 12 year old child steal zeus's lightning bolt explain this to yeah. me right now how this child that is five feet tall and like is like the outcast everywhere he goes somehow was able to do that and none of you noticed like how did yeah he and especially like he didn't know who he was yet the person no. did not know who he was and you just had all of these kids in Olympus, supposedly. That wouldn't mm -hmm. be your first place to look. Yeah, like Percy was not even there. That's very easy to find out because he has no idea who he is. And like he has, he's genuinely like confused all the time. Like it's very easy to tell that he's actually confused. He's not yeah. pretending, he's 12. <laughs> 12 year olds aren't good at pretending most of the time for stuff like that. And so, but like none of that like enters their mind because they're so focused on their goal and just getting like the helm and and the and all this stuff back for Hades that it it like even later on when they run into them later on when they're like before they get to like Medusa's place they don't notice it then either like neither one like realizes that they're both talking about different things <laughs> until the very end like they think they're talking about the helm but the kids think that they're talking about the lightning bolt and neither one of them has what they want and nobody figures it out until they actually talk to Hades and he's like what <laughs> yeah but like they're so sure that this child stole it that they like it's crazy to think that they show up at school and attack him and almost kill him when he didn't have anything. Like there was nothing yeah. there. But it, I mean, it is on brand for them if we want to go back to before they were the kindly ones, you know, like that they would go after somebody without knowing all the facts because, you know, the whole Orestes situation, if they would have known the facts, hey, Apollo sent this kid to kill his mom, and then whatever random stuff they came up with i need to reread it to see exactly what the argument was but i'm pretty sure it was yeah you're not a child of your mother you're more a child of your father um so yeah which i know you love here <laughs> yeah i really love that <laughs> that's my favorite thing that people can say to me oh my gosh yeah <laughs> Yeah, but going back to the limited omniscience thing, um, 
you're right. The whole story could not take place if the Greek gods were omniscient, if they were omnipotent either. That's that's always been a feature of mythology or of Greek mythology specifically that I enjoyed is that um, the gods kind of share omnipotence in, in a way. Like when you put them all together, yes. But separately, they each have their own little domains. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I don't know if it's just the neurodivergence, but I'm like, oh, we can categorize these things. That feels great. <laughs> exactly. Like I, I like how on in Percy world, like they have to like, like pray or like, or forget the exact word they use, but um, sacri- like, give like food sacrifices, yeah, in order to like get their attention because it's like it's one of those things of like we're just like off. There's too many people in this in this planet to like keep track of everyone but if you do something to try to get our attention we might notice they sometimes still don't when they do that um Mm -hmm. but they at least have that in there as like this is one way you can try to get their attention where they're aware of something but they still might not actually be aware of it (laughs) it's Mm -hmm. it's kind of like a let's I feel like it's almost like they're built an excuse of like yeah we care about you as our kids as our demigod kids and you can pray to us and then we'll pay attention to you, but we might not actually pay attention to you. So. <laughs> but you can I mean, at least so try. Not, right? Yeah. And, and like, if you want us to know that something is going on, that is a way for you to do it. Um, if we actually get the message. Yeah. I mean, so with, yeah, not having the God's attention. So the food thing, yeah, I think I've talked about the per, um, Prometheus myth where that whole thing comes from, um, that they did want a portion of burnt offerings. Um, but the other part of getting a god's attention back in the ancient world would be going to their altars. And the only spot we see that in Percy Jackson in the Olympians is when they go to the arch, I'm pretty sure. Or at least in, in Lightning Thief. I have to mm-hmm. reread the rest of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but... What also is is interesting to me is that, you know, temples, it really was a big deal of getting their offerings at temples. Like when Zeus wants to get rid of the mortals in a flood, he's, you know, the the rest of the gods are like, okay, but who's going to attend to our altars? Like, Mm -hmm. um, so tending to their altars seems to have become a new thing in this, this modern version, if we take Rick's version of it, because going to the ark it's not like people go and leave flowers for athena or you know like burn food at at the freaking Mm -hmm. ark or what else would they do i don't i don't fucking know but you know um they're not they're not worshiping at her temple like that and it'd be it would have been interesting to see some of that of like oh yeah this is exactly where the altar would be at this temple and this Mm -hmm. is another way we could get their attention um that would be really cool to include. Yeah. Yeah, because I like how, like, the St. Louis episode, that the arch itself is, like, a temple. Like, they made it purposefully to be a temple, but it could also be something else in, like, the rest of the human world. But mm-hmm. it's the, that whole thing with, like, there being temples is interesting to think about just because in that episode it doesn't work. Like, mm-hmm. Athena is being terrible and so yeah they are not able to like pray to her and like ask for her help it doesn't even they don't even get that far but then at the same time percy like flings himself off off of the arch and like water literally like catches him and pulls him in and so it's like a weird thing of poseidon's temples is almost any water that but not all water because it doesn't work earlier in the episode when they're in a water fountain, <laughs> but but it does work with Nancy Bobo Fett in the fountain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they can't make like, their mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's one of those other like temperamental things of like it's like Poseidon isn't gonna heal him every single time. He's gonna heal him when he's fall literally falling to his death because he doesn't want his kid to die, but. Uh, if it's not like to that point yet it's like they almost pick and choose about what water he lets him use or or i don't even know if it's necessarily that like thought out or if the emotion behind it has anything to do with it like that Mm -hmm. percy was really mad at nancy 
um, because she was being a gross ass bully. <laughs> and so that made him do that without being aware that he was even doing it. And the same way that the water literally like grabs him, like they're an arm in St. Louis, he has he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't even know that he can breathe underwater by that point. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, I don't know. It's interesting though, to think about how almost Poseidon is like choosing, like I can heal my son now. And other times it's like, no, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, so Poseidon's domain, if I'm remembering right, I think it is all water. I think, mm -hmm. I think because there are specific river gods, but he's the Lord over those river gods. So yeah. he can, he then gives the orders to everybody else. If like, you know, he wants the waters to rise or he wants them to, um, to go crazy at, at some point or something like that. Mm -hmm. He's the one who calls that out. But I don't know that there's a fountain God. There probably is not. <laughs> I don't think so. There's like the, the things that Percy talks to in the series when he's underwater, when, because he never actually talks Maybe. to the down there. Yeah. The, like the naiads and stuff, they're like, mm -hmm. They're like that, like, that's like a thing in like the books that there's like a water spirit that takes care of like every major water thing. It's like a joke mm -hmm. in the series that there's like a water spirit that's supposed to take care of like the Hudson River in New York because that river yeah. is disgusting. <laughs> and it's, and like the spirit is like really pissed off because of how messed up like the water that they're supposed to take care of is all the time. That's like, that's like a part of like the last book of the series when the big battle happens in New York. <laughs> And yeah. so there are like people like that, that are, that like report back to his dad. Um, but it's, it is, I like how they have a distinction though, between like man-made stuff and then mm -hmm. his stuff, because he would have nothing to do with a weird ass water fountain that's like yeah. celebrating manifest destiny <laughs> yeah. because, at Athena's temple, because Athena wouldn't like manifest destiny. I, I've decided that she won't because I don't want her to. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. She she would like conquering places. Yeah, but yeah. Because I think that would be considered a positive warfare back then. I mean, the, the Romans were the first, um, <laughs> the first colonizers, probably. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, at least that we know of. They were really excited about that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were, they kept their gods, but they just added them to the state gods. So yeah, they didn't completely erase people's culture in that way. And I mean, I want to say it was only in Caesar, which he was writing himself that, you know, of course, they claim that people liked being conquered, because then there was law and order and stuff. Um, every that sounds so familiar. It. Yeah. Wow, we never hear our government say shit like that ever. <laughs> yeah. It's always been the same way. White people yeah. have always done the same shit. Yeah, they just like us ruining their culture because then we force them to have ours and that makes everything so much easier. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So one, one thing with the theories that I think is interesting to think about outside of like the mythology stuff, but it's still... I I have such a hard time watching the first episode of Percy Jackson because it's literally Percy gets gaslit by everyone he's ever met. Oh and my gosh, it, yeah. It's so hard for me to watch it. Like I, I tried to get myself to watch it like this morning and yesterday and I couldn't make myself do it between that and Gabe. I like can't do it. <laughs> and oh it's God. it's just, even with his mom, his mom even like gaslights him for most of his life about this stuff. And like, it's one of those weird things to think about when it comes to like how he grew up specifically that he didn't go to camp until he was 12 when some mm -hmm. of the other kids go much sooner like he grew up thinking